Dearest viewers, Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. And welcome to another session here on du'as, digging deeper, where over the last few sessions we've been looking into the du'as that we recite in Shah Ramadan, starting with Allahumma adkhil ala ahlil qubur al surur. And we've been using the wonderful book, Manifestations of the All Merciful by Sheikh Khalfan to guide us through this du'a, through his uh, terrific commentary. And as I've said at the beginning of each of these, if you'd like to jump ahead or if you'd like to read round, by all means, please do so. The book is widely available online, especially at islam.org. So today's session, we're focusing on the next line of the du'a. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma qdi dayna kulli madin. O oh Allah, facilitate the payment of every indebted one. Now, the notion of being in debt, we know both in uh, an Islamic perspective, but also in a, in, a, in a general secular perspective as well, is not a favorable position for anyone. And this is an obvious reason as to why we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help those who are in a state of debt to facilitate and help them in the, in, in, uh, in the facilitation of the payment um, so they can come out of this situation. Um, and I think... I don't want to go into the uh, the details about um, when is a good time to get debt, when is uh, why you know when it is a good time, how to go about it, what's the Islamic way of of giving a loan, the benefits of those who are more affluent, um, and uh, thanks to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, giving loans to those who are in need. I don't want to go into that. The book does, but I, I don't want to don't want us to, to to go into that. But I think it's just important for us to take a step back to remember that this is an unfavorable position for someone to find themselves in, in especially in excessive debt, because it can really control one's mind, one's situation, um, their every thought. And I think perhaps, at least in uh, in where we live. Uh, in in the West, if you like, yes, we see debt. Um, you know, for those who have maybe taken on for buying A, B, C, etc. But I think you know when, and that, and that can be difficult. But I think for those, especially who are in absolutely desperate situations, we don't see as much of it in the West. We do see it, but maybe not as much of it. And I think when you see, you know, in in other uh, parts of the world, there are those who are really, you know, having to knock on doors and ask and ask and ask and say, "Yeah, I'll give it back. I'll give it back over ground." That's a very difficult position to be in. So I think just. Uh, it's a moment for us to take a step back and realize that it's a very unfavorable position and it can really occupy someone's mind completely, which of course can mean that they don't use that intellect that they have and the capacity of their brain that they have to focus on seeking nearness to Allah because it can really make things clouded. So I think that's just an important point to mention at the beginning. But to dig deeper into, into this line as well, um, I want us to really understand what Dain as a word really means because this will again open things up a little bit um, and this is quite a common thing actually when you look at the commentators of Quran especially in, and actually then also in the du'as and, and of the hadith as well that in the language of Arabic it's quite normal that you take a word and you remove parts of it the grammatical side of it if you like and you end up with a root behind that word and that by then looking into the definition behind that root you then realize where this word actually comes from, the origination of this word. And it can really make you think about a concept um, in a very, very different way. And it's a very common practice that happens um, amongst the commentators. So when you take the word Dane, which we translate to in this uh, line of the du'a as debt, we translate Dane as debt, you end up, when you break down the word, naturally you end up with the letters Dalia and Noon. And this actually originates from the word inqiyad, which is someone, or is the, the state of being in submission or surrender. And all of the derivatives of it link towards this notion of submission or surrender. And it's quite a 
powerful and profound way to realize the weight of being indebted to someone. That if I go to my next door neighbor, if I go to a family member or a community member, ultimately, by falling into debt, by being indebted to them, I'm surrendering to their every command. If they say this is how I want it to be repaid, I'm the one that has taken on that. I am in a position of lowliness compared to their heightened state against me. And that's why when you really think about it from that perspective, it can start to really define and make you feel just the state of those who are in the state of debt, what it must feel like, the burden it must have, that they are now indebted, or if we can use the word, they are surrendering and having to be submissive to something else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's a frightening, frightening level of, you know, it can really consume you. It's really a, a frightening way to think about it. And that, that's the richness of the Arabic language that gets us there. And in fact, we have a hadith attributed to Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, sallallahu wa sallam, where he says, Ad-dayn al-riq, wal-qadha'u itq, itq. Debt is slavery, and payment is freedom. And in another hadith attributed to him, he says, "Adainu ahadu riqqin." Debt is one of the two kinds of slavery. When you think about it that way, you know, it really brings us to light. You know, until we've paid, we really are surrendering and submitting to that other person. And of course, we know there are halal ways to take out debt and to facilitate a loan where this and this this feeling doesn't actually come up. And again, we're not going to go into that. But I think it's it's of absolute importance for us to realize to be careful of not getting into debt. Yes, I know I said that maybe we in the West don't see it as intensely as it's seen in other economies, but there are certainly those who are in the West and who do find themselves in such a state. Now, sometimes, of course, that can happen through uh, very honest means that, you know, that things have turned very difficult for them, health issues have cropped up, mortgage payments have mounted, etc. And and you can find yourself in that situation. We ask Allah to keep us safe and to provide us with the risk so that we don't fall into such situations unless it's good for us and beneficial for us and that we can learn and grow and come closer to Him. But actually... When you when you really reflect on it and you think, you know, you are to some extent able to fall into that into that so easily, so easily. And it can really be this lure of materialistic things that from starting very innocently and taking you know, perhaps a student loan and taking you know a mortgage, a loan for your house. That those very you know stable and you could argue necessary things to go into debt for and it's a relatively controlled state, but very quickly with you know financing options that are available to us when buying things like you know fancy cars or maybe uh, you know electronics and fancy TVs and sofas etc. You can very quickly find yourself racking up credit card payments, racking up loans because you know it's only fifteen pounds or fifteen dollars or whatever a month. And then you have another one and another one and another one. And actually you start living beyond your means. You start becoming excessive. And at some point that can catch up with you. And you can feel at this point of being surrendering to those who you are indebted to. It it consumes your every thought. And that, that can be a very real place for us to end up in with the amount of adverts around us and the consumerist mindset that we are sat with it so it is a you know perhaps a level of warning to us as well that look fine alhamdulillah if we are in a position where we're not facing this debt we should be very grateful but we must be very very cognizant that we could easily end up in that state and that state is one that is very very dangerous as we said attributed to emir al-mu'minin debt is slavery and payment is its freedom debt is one of the two kinds of slavery it's a very dangerous place for us to be in so we must be on the lookout for it and interestingly just to conclude on this point this notion of being in debt to someone and being therefore being surrendering to them you know it, it extends to other types of debt as well um, and just to give one example and i think it's quite a beautiful uh, hadith 
that um, is attributed to Imam al-Sadiq where he narrates from Nabi Luqman alayhi salam. When Nabi Luqman is rep- uh, reported to have said, when the time of prayer comes, do not delay the prayer for something else. Pray and take rest for verily it is a debt, it is a dain. I think this is quite, you know, it's something that we all feel, inshallah, do feel that when the time for salah comes, we do feel that weight on our shoulders that, you know, yeah, I've got to, I've got to get a move on. You know, we do feel it, it is on our shoulders, you know, we know we need to go and be submissive, therefore, to our creator, we must surrender everything that we have and go towards him. And that's hugely tricky. And I say this to myself, you know, you're, you're in the, in the thick of work. And it's back-to-back meetings, left, right, and centre. But when, you know, for example, at the moment, it's almost spot on one o'clock here in the, in the UK at the moment in the afternoon. When that comes, we feel that weight, you know, or maybe we should feel that weight if we don't. Because we are indebted to our creator. We're completely indebted to him. And this is not just, I think, for salah. Maybe, and this is a personal opinion, a personal opinion maybe this extends to all of the other forms of obligatory worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put on us because we do understand that we are the poor and he is the rich we mentioned this Allahumma aghni kulla faqir that he, he is, he is the, he's the rich and all, all of the bounties and blessings and rizq comes from him and we are ultimately the poor and we are indebted to him and none but him so if he is the one who gives us everything is setting out conditions and orders that we must worship him in these ways at these times be it in our prayers in our siyam and our fasting in our khums etc then we must do it it must feel like a burden on our shoulders and if it doesn't that is something that we need to question and just on that theme again i'm taking this from a personal reflection on this that in the nights of qadr where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes who of his creations will have the opportunity to come visit the Kaaba and conduct the pilgrimage of Hajj, of their wajib Hajj. Again, there are very clear conditions that are set out as to when that becomes obligatory. And the moment that becomes obligatory upon us, we should feel the weight. We should feel the weight and we should surrender entirely everything for him, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we don't, and if we're delaying that khums payment, all that salah, all those repayment fasts, all that hajj, we should feel that weight on our shoulders. We must surrender. This is like a dain. This is like a debt to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's given us everything and these are the terms of our repayment, if you like. So, to summarize on this line of Allahumma khidayna kulli madin, we started by understanding this is a very tough position for those who fall into a state of debt. We must pray for them. And I think it's beautiful that this du'a reminds us not to just think of ourselves in our fortunate positions, but to reflect on those who are in that very challenging situation. It is a very unfavorable position. And why? Because we understood that when we look behind the word Dane and we go to its root, we end up at the notion of surrendering to someone or an entity or the one who you are indebted to. And this is a very tough state for one to be in, in a very dangerous position. And therefore, we said that we must ourselves be on guard, which we're grateful that we're not there, but we should be on guard ourselves, that we don't fall into a life of overly luxurious uh, spending and therefore finding ourselves in debt, taking us away from our creator because then we become submissive to the one who we are indebted to. We then saw the link from the hadith that Imam Sadr is attributed to have said, which was attributed to Nabi Luqman, that when the time of salah comes, drop everything because this is like a state of debt. This is a, it's like a, it's like a dain and this should be on our shoulders and we should feel it and we must react and alleviate any debts that we have to our creator because we are ultimately submissive to him and only him. So inshallah, we pray for all of those who are in a state of debt to be relieved with this line of the dua, Allahumma qli dayna kulli madi. Inshallah, you can join us on the next session where we join, uh, where we go into the next line of the dua. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Oh.